Okay, let's load something in here. This is our machine 2.4 software. Let's check this out. All right, cool. It's like a loading project. So, well, anyway, here I am. This is 2.4, and welcome to our new video lesson plan. So, obviously, as you can see, it looks kind of cool. And I can change my view too. I go right here, and I go to full screen. And this is much better. I get the whole full screen effect right here. If I want, I can go right on top here. I got the pop down menu again, which is kind of cool. Where I can just change my view totally. I can do the same thing here right on the full screen view. I go to view here and I say, well, let's leave full screen. Which I can do easily. So the first thing you'll need to realize is that we have everything that machine gives us and it's all in categories. So for example, here we have all projects. Next, here we got all groups. So a group is comprised of samples in that group and sounds in that group. And each group has its own uh, sound and sound sort of flavor, we'll call it, right? You'll see it says Abbey Road here. These are like some kits. You'll see some kits may say hip hop kit or some sort of his auto or topsy kit, right? Or the Adam Hart kit. So you'll notice the image kits are already labeled, even the base kits labeled. Next, we have sound. These are probably sounds that are in some of the kits. Also, we have instruments. I've got some patches that come with machine, and I also have complete nine, which is kind of cool to have. And we've got effects, and we have samples. This is almost like an all-in-one package, which we like a lot. And this is our universal setting. You'll notice here, so the global thing here, sort of like, and these are all the projects or the categories or the samples or the effects that come with machine and anything that you buy that you import now over here is you and these will be all the project samples um you can even make effects settings they can all be right here so you can go back to stuff you designed and then stuff that native instruments defined designed for a machine so of course, so this is our browser section. And I'll go to projects again. You'll see here we have types of projects, right? So we have breaks, club. And so there are categories like these are downbeat, these are electro, these are urban. So we'll have projects, but then there are types of projects as well. So I can click on it and then click on it again. Now I'll see all of them. If I click on any one of these here, I will see the categories designed for that. So for example, I click here, I see the worldwide projects that machine has given us if I want to load one in I go back here scroll down here just click I'll double click and it will load the project up just like that projects we have types or groups we have types sounds instruments effects and samples there are just a lot of types right so for example here in projects have types breaks these are all the breaks these are the club type projects the downbeat project electro urban and the worldwide projects so we have different types of projects different types of groups there are kits and then these kits as you can see here mostly drums obviously and you see there's a bunch of different kits here and I, have, I want to go acoustic. These are all acoustic kits, analog kits, artist kits. As you can see, the artist's name appears before the kit. We have special kits. See this? Real special kits. Urban kits. Now, when we go here and select sounds, we have drums. A lot of drum sounds. I just want a kick drum. No, I want a clap. Look for claps. These are all the claps. This is great. This is a great way for you to find what you're looking for. It makes it much easier. Let's go to instruments. Now we have instruments. Let's get bass. Oh, went to mallet. Let's go to bass. This is bass. Tons of bass. And you can scroll up here. And this populates with a list once I select that particular type. Now notice here, when I select instruments, we have types. And then we have modes. 
So for example, here's a piano and keys, different modes. There's an adaptive keyboard sound. There's also chords. We have the physical mode, the process, the sample based mode. These are all different keyboard modes that we have. I can do the same for bass. I can go analog, baseline, fretted, fretless, and then the list populates right here. This is a great way for you to find anything you want, even when you actually bring in some of these extra packs you might buy from Native Instruments, you can find them. And particularly with Complete, I have Complete, so it offers me a wider selection of instruments and effects. And we have a lot of samples. I want to change my view before I start. I want to go into view. I want to go to full screen. Ah, I feel better now. Now, we have full screen view. And here I have samples selected in my library, right? My universal library for my native instrument machine. Now, you'll see you have drums and loops and we have one shots. And now this is selected here. Now at the bottom here, I have a little speaker and a little triangle here which tells me how loud that sound is going to be, right? And here, I can load this sound. So let's turn this off first of all. I'm going to go back to here. I'm going to clear this out. Let's go to reset. And now it says sound, right? So now, I'm going to go to here. Uh, make sure you stay there. Go right here. And I got a sax there, right? And I'm just going to use my up and down arrow. And I'm auditioning sounds. If it's too loud, I can go to here and lower it down. Oops, go back to gotta click here first. And I go back down here. Once I go to here, I gotta go back here again. And we're auditioning sounds, which is great. You can hear what's going on and pick what you want to use before you use something. I'm gonna go further down here. Perfect. Now, but you'll notice also here, nothing fills in here. Now, if I click this on right here, this will load the sound. So for example, I can go to here and click on that. I hear that. I go to here and click on that. I hear this bass. Now, if I go to here and turn the loader on, and I click on the next instrument, let's say I wanna click on this bass. You'll notice it appears here in group A1. It's the first sound. And it's installed right there. If I click right here, you'll hear it again. So this allows me to install. So let's go back here. I'll hit this sound. So every time I hit something, it installs it. Now I'm going to move my up and down cursor now. And as I keep moving up, you'll notice it installs that next sample sound in the first category right here for group A. In this first row, 1 through 16, in the first sound slot. So be aware of that. So what I normally go back and do is turn that sound off. That's too loud. I'll go here and I'm gonna I'm gonna reset this to zip and then I'm gonna turn off my loader because I'm not trying to load. I just want to audition. And that's how we can audition sounds. In the machine software. Now this works for your machine micro, machine, and the machine studio. Sometimes I'm looking for a specific sound. I want to see if, if there's one in there or if I loaded one from my own library. So for example, here are loops. I can find drum loops, right? I'll click here. I'm looking for something. We see actually nothing populate down here. Let's go to drums, clap. Okay, we got clap, but bass is still here. See this? I'm doing all this stuff here and nothing's going down here because the reason why is the search query here is filled with some letters. It says bass. Let's get rid of that. Now we see this. This is very important. Make sure that your search query area right here is clear. Nothing should be in there. Then when you actually click on something, like go back to loops again, click on drums, hey, you can now find those drum loops. You can, oh. Now listen back to them. And here it's going on. It's important 
when you are searching and you want to see what's in the software, leave that open. Now, if I want to find something though, I go here, I'll select base. And now I'm just typing in. Even when I got to the first S, it already filled it up. So it's a really fast search query. It finds everything that's already been viewed by the machine software that's part of its own library. So it knows everything and it helps you to search much faster than pretty much any of the software I've seen before, as far as a little uh, DAW. Now here, I can pick out my different bases. Of course, I can load them. And once I see that, I can have other sounds. I can select also as well, as you can see there. Now, this is samples. We'll look at effects now. Now, I can also load effects in. And you see we have a lot of effects. I have happen to have complete so i have a lot of effects here also as well and our delays and distortion and dynamics but we can load these in too for example i can go here to let's say verbs and i can pull up a clap reverb and you notice here in the bottom we can't audition that right but we can load it into a slot right here in group a and I can have a slot with the reverb. And later on, I'll show you how we can actually route a signal into this slot and use this reverb. But once you get familiar with the idea that we do have effects, and when you do, you can use them also within a group. Now I'm scrolling back here to my library uh, top, and I'm looking at here, we have sample. Notice in the bottom that we can audition the samples. We showed you that already, of course. We can audition the effects. Notice I go to instruments. We can't audition instruments. Look at sounds. The same thing. I'm going through sounds here and I can't audition them. And here we have groups. We can't audition groups because they're just total groups. So, the reason why we can't audition sounds, let's go back to clap, let's say, for example, here. I'm going to load a clap in. I'll double click this. You'll notice now there are a bunch of different sounds here. There's the sound here, the key sound. There's a maximizer. There's a transient master. There's a reverb there, right? So if I hit this, all that is happening at once. So the reason why we can't audition is because we have to load in a lot of different effects and maybe the sound itself to get an idea of what it is. Now here you see I put down sample. There's no sample there, right? Here's the keyboard. And each one that is there, here's the main original key sound, that sample for the clap. But all these effects that maximize up to the reverb have to be applied. So we won't hear that as an audition sound. Let's clear this out and reset this first slot there. Great. Now when it comes to when it comes to these groups. You can't really audition the groups, right? I need to load them in. So I can double click to load them or I can just press the load button here and select the group and it loads in. But notice now it loads in with a pattern. And you see we have these notes here, these little blocks which represent notes and timing for that particular pattern based on our grid right here. Uh, let's press play. Play start, rather. We can control the audio from right here on top, bring this down a little bit, and play it from play start again. I can hit play start again to start again, or I can hit play to stop it. So we can load in our kits from here. And that's what this button here does. It loads in this data here a pattern so if i turn this off and now i load a kit in the old pattern still remains there right so let's undo 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 and now we're blank again i go back here and load this in and now we just load in the kit as you can see and there's no pattern loaded so if I select here and then I load it again, now we have a pattern for this kit. It's a 
in the red here in the top. Be careful of that. Let's bring it down. So when you do load a kit in, be careful of where your audio levels are. That's important. You don't want to blow your speakers. You want to make sure you pretty much start pretty low. So whenever you load a new kit in, let's go back to here. Make sure your levels are right. Okay, perfect. Well, I loaded a kit here. Let's see, let's play this back. Okay, we'll press play again to stop it. And as you can see, it's pretty big. You'll notice here in the top part of scenes, right? And you'll see this is like eight bars, but you only see like only two bars here in the actual pattern area. So I'm going to click here. This is where we can see our view better. There you go. Now we got a better look at the view. And now we can see the entire pattern. Of course, you can go this far or whatever, but it's important for you to know this, how to view your entire pattern. Okay, so I've got this kit here, and I want to change something, just for the sake of changing something. Okay, we got a kit. I want to go here. I want to look for something to change it to. So, uh, I'm going to look for maybe some sounds. And I may want to get a sample. I like that one, not too bad. So we're going to look for a sample here. So I'm going to look for, as you can see, bass is still there. I'm going to get rid of the word bass. And I'm going to look for a clap. Okay, got a clap right here. One. That sounds terrible. hate that clap. Let me find something else I really like to hear. Let's see. Let's look at drums. And we're going to look at claps here. And now we got claps. So notice that I was in something else. I have claps here. I went to here. There are no claps. I went to here. There are claps. So sometimes you can actually populate this entire list by just putting the word clap here, and then you can select the type, and you'll find it. It's important to realize. Okay, I got a clap now. So I got a clap. I'm going to try it right there. Let's go to here. Now, once I click that, my load button is on right here at the bottom, and it goes right here into slot number four because it's there. If it was here, it would have went there, but it was here. Now, I'll play it back from the top. I may want to change that again. On oh, this one. So you can change them as we're playing back the beat. That's kind of cool. projects. They're great to load and you can check out a lot of the parameters of how a project works. So I've got a pattern loaded when I loaded it from my all groups. I loaded a kit up, this kit here, and now I want to load a project up. It's pretty simple. I go to urban. I'll select blow here. It lacks me. This project was modified. Do you want to save it? Discard it. I don't want it. Now what happens now, a project loads in. I'll press play. And we hear this project. Too loud. I want to bring it back down, right? I'll bring it down a little bit more. Hear it back now. So we got a project that loads in. Now, you'll notice here in projects, this is sort of scrunched up here. I'll go here, pull it down. I can see everything now. I can see every single one of these groups here, right? And I can see what they are. And I can click on a group. I can click on a pattern. You'll see the pattern will appear here in the pattern section, right? I click on a pattern here, it appears there. I'll click here, I'll click there. So this is a project. And this project has scenes. There's scenes one, two, and three. I'll put the cursor here, I'll click, scroll over. I wanna see all the scenes. We have 10 scenes in this project. I can move my cursor anywhere, right here in the top, and I can move to any one of these scenes or the bars where they start from. Or right here. Or move it when I'm axis in play. So I can move anywhere and test out what's going on in that scene within the project. Now, as I do hit a pattern, and I hit a pattern for a particular group, like right here, for example. This is the sax, right? You can see the keyboard here. And these are the notes for the sax that are being played. This is a chord, right? I can also go here, scroll here, put my cursor here. Right there, okay, switch it out. 
I can see the entire length of the pattern, which is this pattern right here. I also see I have a meta verb, which is tied to this alto sax sample, as you can see right there. I can click here. I'm looking for, well, what's here? Nothing at all. Slices, zone, no, I see the sample. Yeah, I can play the sample too. See that? I'm playing the sample. Everything is right here for us to view. I can also play back the sequence again from right where it's at. And this is the project. And these are some of the parameters you'll see in a the project. There's a lot to understand here. But what I'm trying to do is get you to understand that there are a lot of projects that come with Machine. I want you to look at a few of them and get an idea of the basics of a project. Now, for my last lesson, I had this little program going on here, this project happening. And sometimes you may want to add something. Suppose you got a track. You can always go here. And I can always go back here to my browser and select, let's say, a group. And here I'm going to go, let's see, here pretty much to this 8087 kit. And I want to put it here. And as I do, I just loaded it in. I also loaded it up with, as you can see, obviously, it's demo. And here it's about, I think it's about close to eight bars. Yeah, it's about eight bars long, as you can see right there, right? And what I can do now, as you can see, it'll play with the project right along here. So I can turn some stuff off so we can make sure we hear it. To do that, I can just click here, click in once, C. One, there's D1, I did B1, as you can see, and the B, C, D1s represent the groups. So I want to keep on the dirty urban kit. Turn off the stretcher right there, too. And as my new group, so it goes A through H, and starts a new set of groups from A2, as you can see here. And the kit I loaded in, you can see obviously right here, which is the 808 Southern kit. And now I can play it back from the top. Got both playing at the same time. Let me cut this one off. Turn this one off. See? So we've got it going. Let's stop that. So I can load anytime I want to load. Let's clear this out. And it says save. I don't want to save. I just want to clear it out. Blank. And so I also have, as you can see here, sounds. I can load sounds up. And if you have sounds, you can do the same thing as well. Now I'll select the sound. Let's say I go to here and I got a sound. I say this is instruments right here. And I load it here. It appears here. You see it's a sampler. Just a sampler, right? So it's a sampler right there. I can click right here. Just the sound. Okay, good. I can go to here. So I'm loading like bass sounds, right? Now, what happens here inside of Machine is that every sound has been marked off and Machine has scanned all these sounds and it has them in its library. And I'll go here to edit. You'll see here in edit that we have instrument, right? And right here it says instrument. And then it says bass. See that? It says sub bass. So these sounds have not just only been scanned in, they've been marked to be in certain categories and types and has properties. You'll see it says bank. This says types. This is properties. This is kind of cool. I can go here to guitar. I have acoustic. I'll select here. There's acoustic guitar right there. And we click on these sounds we see here in our populated list. And you can see their type the bank and the properties, right? Just for the instruments here, right? Which is kind of cool. And this is really great because when you start bringing in your own samples, you can do the same for your samples and categorize them so they'll fit that category that they should be in. One of the great features of working with machine is having this ability in the library to have every sound not just scanned in and you know where it's at, but also where it has these modes and banks and types and pretty much the properties of that particular sound. And you'll see it here also under sounds and you'll see it here under instruments here, for example. 
I go to base and we also have analog. I want to have an analog base and I may want to have a core to it. So I'm selecting other properties. I'm selecting the type and here there's more to the type right here. That's the sound. Now, what do I want that sound to have? It could be a fingered bass, a fretless bass, a pitched bass, a slap bass. And I can also have it, it could be cordial. So it's cord, cordial right there. I can have a dry bass. I may want to have a dry bass. As I do, our list and our search populates right down here with a list of what those bases are. And you'll see that it's done primarily through this ability to categorize the sounds and anything pretty much. So here we have bass analog. I may want to go here and go to percussive. It's still analog. I go to here. So they're all analog, right? I can go to baseline. And now we're changing. It says baseline there, right? And I can go to percussive here. But you can see how the way it's categorized and set up for, you'll see that the properties are checked off here. Bass, baseline. If I go to fingered bass, it's fingered bass, baseline. But I go back at FM, and now it's changed again. Fingered bass right here. Then I have a bunch of basses right here I can select from as my fingered bass. And the same for effects too as well. If I want to go to ambient sound, I select that right there. I want to go here to a chorus sound. I get the chorus, but I have more choices. I have a multi-stage chorus or a single stage chorus. I'll select single stage. The list gets smaller. I'll go multi and the list is different. See that? But this is a great way for us to find what we're looking for based not just on the type, but also on the mode and the category. Now we want to look at samples here from the browser. Here are all samples, right? And we can see here we have drums, loop, and one shot. And nothing's selected here, so we have just a ridiculously long list because we are in samples. But if I go in here and select drums, then a drop down comes up, and we have the type of drums that have already been cataloged in. And you'll see here, I go to clap, and then now we see drums, it says clap, right? And I may want a digital clap. I go to here, and now it says digital has been checked. See that? I can go to snap, and this is, here it is, a snap. It's like a snap and digital at the same time. Isn't that kind of cool? I go to here, and I can see these are snaps. I go to here to symbol. I can go to, ooh, China. I've got these symbols and have all been cataloged. Now, as you can see here, this is icon right here. And this icon is like a universal circle, like right for the world. This is everything that's inside of machine. Suppose you have your own samples and you want to put your samples inside of machine. But what you want to do as you see in our last few lessons, is you want to make sure that they are cataloged and set up, as you can see here, with properties of what those samples are. And this way, when you want to search for them, you can. Now, this will be machine, and this will be you. My little human head right there for an icon. And you will select this right here, and you're in. Let's do that next. A lot of us have our own samples or we're trying to get more samples. Now it's obvious that we have a library. That's the only way a machine can tell what you're picking out. And so all these sounds and projects, uh, groups with the kits, we have these sounds, instruments, effects, and samples have all been tagged with categories and modes and types. So a machine knows what it is and where it's supposed to be. Now, this is the universal sign for everything machine. Here is everything the user has, right? So this little icon for the head of one user is what that user has, whether it's projects, or it could be groups, or it could be sounds, it could be instruments, and of course, effects and samples. Now, I've already tagged some stuff, and generally what I'm normally going to do is go to File, right? I'll go to File here. I'll look for stuff like, here. you'll see on the map that I have my MPC full collection, right? 
And I can go in here, I can look at some sounds. I can go to here, wow, I got sounds here. This is kind of cool. And I can see what kits I have on my MPC. I can go back up one level there. I've got MPC drums for the MPC 2000 X. I can go to here, I can see them right here. I can go to dry drums, I see them right here. I can click on them and I hear them. You'll see they load right here in the group A. I don't want to load, I'll turn this off. I'll go back here. I'll reset. Then I'll play my sound. So I don't load anything. I want to hear what I've got. These are programs, right? So I'm not going to use the programs. But I want to hear what sounds I like. And once I do, I can say, well, I want to use this kit. Or I want to select this kit to be dragged in as part of the sounds or samples that are going to be in my personal library. Let's go back to the library. We'll see part of this library right here. So next, we're going to do that. The first thing I want to do is find the folder where the samples are that I want to get. So obviously here you'll see it says NPC full collection, and these are all the folders inside that folder. Next, I'll go here where it says Macintosh hard drive. So I'm on a Mac, obviously. It says Mac hard drive. Here, it'll show me what's on the hard drive, but here, it'll show me what's connected to my computer. I want to look at this thing, which is my Sample King's hard drive. And here, I want to go into here. And then I want to search for, I think I know where it's at here. This is Sample King's kits here. And I get in here, I'm looking for the hip hop. And then here, I'm looking for Loop Beats. Open Loop Beats up, and this is Loop Beats. And I get in here, this is Loop Beats. So I can see I've got some sounds in here I like. And these are Loop Beats. If I want to test them, I can go to hit one here. And I like some sounds. I can pull them up right here and see what's going on. As you can hear, I'm playing them back. And you can find what you like. And you can see at the bottom here, we can audition the sounds. And we can also bring the audio down, right? That's a pretty long sample. Let's just play. But what I really want to do is I want to make sure that we see this, this sample here, this set here, right? And this is what I've got. This is my loop beats. So what I want to do is I want to tag that up there, right? And make sure that I keep this as my main loop beats folder. So what I want to do now, I want to make it to a favorite. I'm going to right click it here, add the favorites. And now as I do, you, it, you see it appears right here. So now if I go back to the MPC full collection, and then I go back to here, I can see that. But if I go to here, I can now see my loop beats. So now I already know where those sounds are. This is the first step you want to do to get all your folders set up as favorite files and favorite folders right here. The next thing you want to do is to take the files you have that are in those folders and import them into the library. This way, machine will see them all the time. They'll say, okay, you open the machine up. We're looking for all the sounds that belong to the library. Okay, we got it. It's ready for you whenever you need it. So for example, I go to here and I'm right clicking. I can't add to favorites. I can't import to library because this is a separate sound, a separate file. Let's go back up one level here. I go back up one level and now I'm at the folder. I right click here and now I can add it to favorites. I can also import to the library. Now, if I go to import to library, I have the ability now to tell machine what I want to categorize it as a type. You know, and I got everything here. Look at this. I've got everything I need right here. I can say loops and there's loops. Okay. I'll say it's loops. Oh, we got more stuff. These are just drum loops. Oh, I like that. And then hip hop. That's right. These are hip hop drum loops. So look, and if I think it's something different, I can always add, as you can see at the bottom of each one of these columns is a plus sign. So I can say, for example, I can say, well, these are loops. These are certain type of loops. I can make a different idea. Go here and say, well, uh, here I can say these are not just drum loops. These are drum machine loops, right? Let's go to here. I'll say drum machine loops. Let's make that 
wait, I and E. And since we're in loops, I know it's loop, I'll say drum machine. A new category called drum machine. It's also drum loops, but drum machine loops. Keep that out. I can pull this out of here. Of course, I got back to here. I've got hip hop beats, right? I can come to here. Once I get there, nothing's here in the type. I can add a new type there as well. And this is to get you familiar with and make it easier for you to categorize, set types up for the samples or the sounds you want to import into your machine library. Now, once that's done, I'll say OK. I'll come to the bottom here, select OK, and look what happens. It's importing the folders into the library. It's going to say, I'm tagging this, I'm tagging this one, and whenever you want it, they're always there. So I can go back to here in the library. I can go right here I'm at, right? And we got loops. I can say we got samples right there. We got loops. Oops, there they go. We got some loops. And the loops are right there. Let's turn this up a little bit. We can hear it better. Oh, yeah. You got it right there. And it's right there. I'm just tapping. I can hear my loops over and over. And they're already tagged. This is a great way for you to import your samples and your sounds into machine. Now, once you're able to tag your sounds and bring them in, you can then also always bring them into a group. So for example, I've got this sound here. I can either turn this on, which will be automatic import or just take it and select any one of these rows here in the group, right? And I can say, double click there, and now it appears here. That's the sample that's actually in my computer or on a separate hard drive. I can go to here, and I can see the sample right here as well, as you can see right there, right? I can click it here. I gotta hold it down though here, see this? It's not one shot, I must hold it down in this case. And You'll notice here that I'm still also in this section here. Let me turn the sample off. Where I just see the grid here, right? I can also go to here. I can see it in terms of the keyboard. So there's just different pitches. As you got to play one or many of them. And the pitch changes. And I go right here. And now I see it as a sample. So this is really cool because you can actually see it from the hard drive. You might not want to use it, but you can at least tamper with it, maybe improve it. And these will be some lessons we're going to show you more when we cover the full idea of what to do with the sample, whether you're going to improve it or cut it or chop it or just sort of like add something to it to make it even better. But I want to get you familiar with the software and how this window works. Well, so once you've got something categorized and you want to bring that sample back in, you can, you can look at it and also change it somewhat too. It's pretty simple to do. Like for example, I got the sample here and I just click right there. I've selected the entire sample range. And I can go to here and select normalize and now it's louder. See that? That's pretty quick. Now, but you notice also here it changed the name of the sample too as well. It had a one here. As you can see there's no real one there. So I have actually a new sample. I can go here, click. Oh yeah, that's a lot. So that I improve that sample with just a click of going here to normalize it and get it as loud as possible without having distortion. This is the beauty of using machine. Now once I've tagged it, brought it in, and I sort of messed with the sample a little bit in that last lesson, I can do whatever I want to do. I can keep this sample, keep the old sample, add it to the new one and have it in my bank. But what I can also do, as I'm listening to sounds that have already been tagged and that machine is recognized that are my samples on my computer system, I may want to re-tag them. I tag the folder, but not each individual sample inside that folder. To do that, it's pretty simple. I've got this sample selected here. Notice the difference. Okay, you see it says one right there, right? So I'll go to here, I'll go to edit. And I'll notice it says loops, drum loop, hip hop beat. But you know, this is actually a sample from a James Brown record. 
I know that. And of course, there's a guy in there in the background. It's a real drummer. So I'll put that. I'll click human too as well. And now, as you can see, once I did that, machine's asking me, do I want to apply this to that sample? I said, sure. And so now I've applied it to the sample, which gives me more definition to what that sample is. So I'm looking for a drum loop. That's a hip hop beat with a human feel, which is actually a live drummer from a record. I'm looking for those type of samples. It'll now appear in this category type as the search goes on for samples that have been tagged by machine that are hip hop beat human. It's kind of really cool. I can go to my next beat here. I know that's pretty much a drum machine, right? I can go back in and say what that is. Let's say I go to here, this category here. I think I made up a little category already for calling it drum machine. And I could say, well, you know, that's not something like a drum machine for me. And I would say, okay, it's a drum machine loop, and I would use that. But the whole idea is that once you get your loops in, or your sounds in, and you want to add more information, so when the search comes up, you can find the specific category type you're looking for, do it. It makes it much easier when you're using machine.